Hello and welcome to the Gallant Goblin. I'm Theo and this is my kitty Tilly and today I'm so happy to share with you a paid Kickstarter preview from Steamforce Games. This is Animal Adventures the Faraway Sea. The Faraway Sea is the standalone follow-up book to Animal Adventures The Secret of Gullet Cove, which introduced this new setting and provided rules for playing as awakened cats and dogs in your adventures. The Faraway Sea takes those ideas and blows the doors open on the possibilities. Plus, there are lots of new adorable minis that we'll show you today. And because awakened cats and dogs are absolutely present in D&D and Pathfinder, you can use the minis in those games as well. You get pre-generated cat and dog heroes in this set based on the Gullet Cove rules. But you'll also get new rules options and 10 new animal species that you'll be able to play as, and I'll show you all of them in this video. You'll also get two new classes, the Watcher and the Tinker Mage, which I'll show you about in a bit as well. And there's a new island setting with 11 separate explorable islands, all filled with adventure and danger and magic. There are three new adventures to get you started in the new setting. There's new monsters, NPCs, and rivals, plus a new type of magical item, the Genius Loci. I'll tell you all about it in a bit. And you also have improved hex crawling rules to help make your island exploration a little bit more engaging. There's 10 new battle maps and 23 new animal miniatures to help bring your player characters to life. That's on top of many dog and cat minis that were already available over on the Steamforce Games web store. So if at any time you like, you feel like I'm sold, check out the video description down below to find a link to the Kickstarter so you can go back it. You can also get there using that eye in the corner of your screen right now. There are numerous reasons to get in during the Kickstarter period. The prices are going to be much cheaper than they are after launch. You'll get a say in how they develop the book and the minis. You'll help improve and expand the project. And you'll get access to the Kickstarter exclusive Baby Kraken Mini here. Now, I'm very careful about which fundraising projects I choose to share with you. I've turned down several in the past because I didn't really feel comfortable vouching for them, but Steamforge Games has numerous completed fundraising projects behind them, and I'm fully confident in them. Remember that Kickstarters do take time to fulfill, so be sure to read through the Kickstarter page and the FAQ to make sure you understand everything before you jump in. And again, check out that link to the campaign page below, but for now, let's start by taking a look at these new minis, beginning with the minis for our new playable races. Each of these 10 awakened animal types are going to have a full rule set so you can adventure as them in your campaigns. And there's a many for each. I don't have the full rules themselves yet, but we can get a taste of what's to come in the final book. The minis in the campaign come in various sets. The first set of figures here are available in the Animals of the Faraway Sea box set. And as we go through these, I'm going to show you some pictures of painted versions of the figures from the extremely talented artist Electric Eve. You can find her at I Can't Think em on Twitter and at Electric Eve on Instagram. So let's dive in. Let's start with the Goat Paladin because goats. Now all of these minis are 3D printed resin samples. The final minis will be plastic and there may be slight differences as they go through the production process. This is the first time we've been able to show you samples of pretty much all the minis in the Kickstarter project. But oh my god, look at this heroic, well-armored hero goat. You can get a better sense of how epic he is when we look at Electric Eve's painted version. Our goat friend may not even need that sword with those armored horns. And it seems that the goat paladin comes with a baby goat druid as well. Such a stonking cute little guy. I have no idea if there will be any special rules for the kid goat, but he might be a precocious lad to bring along on your adventures. I don't know. He's got a cute little satchel and a little necklace, and here you can see them all painted up together. One of the absolute highlights of the set is the alpaca bard. According to the lore of the game, alpacas are a formidable force of mischief. The only reason they're held to the earth is because they upset the owls so much with their shenanigans that the owls curse them to walk on the land forever. They're resourceful and strategic, but maybe always keep at least one eye on them at all times. Better to have them on your side than against you, though. 
The Albatross Wizard is one of my favorites. I love the combination of the wizard's hat, the goggles, the potions tied around the waist, the spell scrolls on his back, and the spell books losing pages as he makes a water landing. Of course, the Albatross has a reputation for being a harbinger of ill omen, but that's just because they're smart and they see problems before anyone else. When you portend bad tidings, some people actually believe you to be the cause. I love this combination, the fox sorcerer. The fox is already cunning and too charming for his own good. Combine that with the innate arcane talents of a sorcerer, and you've got, excuse me, an explosive combination. This little guy has a whooshing tail and the flowing scarf and fiery magical effect to match. I have to imagine that this will be a popular character to play when the game launches. This is one of the crazier minis, the Pig Barbarian. He's loaded to the hilt with weapons and strappy armor, holding a war axe in his mouth, eye patch bolted to his head, and of course, he's running through the mud. Pigs are considered smart, curious, playful, and hungry. And they're also fiercely protective of their friends. And woe unto you if you hurt someone they care about. I think all of us who watched Babe and Babe 2 Pig in the City know this to be true. Next, we have the Rabbit Monk, another natural combination. Rabbits are swift, nimble, and pack a fierce kick. They're also big on family and have big families. So when you get to know one rabbit, you're probably inviting a dozen into your life. This mini is delivering a flying sidekick over a surprisingly intricate rock formation with bamboo and a little fountain. I like the addition of the bamboo staff as a weapon. This is probably the other craziest, most creative mini, the orangutan, tinker mage, or artificer. In real life, the orangutan is known for using tools to accomplish tasks that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise, and the awakened orangutan just takes that to the next level with all sorts of clockwork and electrical doodads, including this little robot toucan companion. One thing to note is that orangutans are mostly solitary creatures, so they may not be skilled at playing well in groups. And this is one of the cutest ones, but it's probably not wise for me to say that to his face. The Red Panda Fighter. Now, red pandas, also called fire foxes in Gullet Cove, are known to have an affinity for fire. I'm not sure how that's going to translate in game terms, but I suspect that they'll be able to hold their own in combat. Especially this one, loaded to bear with weapons and dressed rather like Robin Hood. Let's stay with the cute theme for our last two animal races, starting with the koala druid, another combination that seems perfectly matched. Pandas are basically the dude, and the dude abides. Happy to just hang out and eat while everyone else seems so uptight and busy. But they do take their time to truly understand the natural world around them and the intricate mysteries of the cosmos. So underestimate the cute koala druid at your own peril. Finally, our last new race is represented by this otter cleric mini, another one of my favorites. Otters are known to be resourceful, effective in groups, and courageous. Though, to paraphrase a well-known fictional outlaw, many otters aim to misbehave. You'll often find them on pirate ships of their own. They don't take well to command structures and authority figures, so the freedom of the high seas suits them well. Though, like most of the races featured here, they are loyal to their friends. Just don't tell them what to do. The Faraway Sea also introduces five new varieties of dog minis for you to use in your adventures. The rules for doggy adventurers are first laid out in the Animal Adventure Secret of Gullet Cove source book with canine traits, rules for different sizes of dogs, breed abilities that act like 5 e feats. There's dog versions of each of the 5e classes, a new background, the canine religion, plus doggy personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. You don't need that original book to play as a doggy though. But if you want a head start, that book and its starter set are available now. The new book will expand the doggy rules and add rules for a doggy version of an artificer and their new class, the Watcher, which we'll still be talking about later. These five new minis are bundled together in a set called Dogs of the Faraway Sea. Let's take a look. I'm going to start with my favorite, the Westie Fighter, as I had a Westie growing up, Rocky. 
This is another seasoned adventurer with an eye patch and a cracked shield emblazoned with a paw print. He's leaping into battle with a long sword strapped to his back, and true to the breed's Scottish origins, his scarf-like belt has been painted up like a tartan. Really cute mini that brings back a lot of memories for me. Next we have our Aussie Druid. This mini really captures that feeling of a dog's boundless energy and optimism, though I usually see them jumping into piles of leaves instead of out of them. One trait that the Animal Adventurer's books emphasizes is a dog's unbreakable loyalty. When you're playing a doggo in one of these stories, it is important to keep that trait in mind. They have unconditional love for those in their pack and will stick with them through thick and thin. Now, how cute is this Chow Chow Bard? This is such a unique figure. I love how they use the little details of the minis to highlight the origins of the various dog breeds. The Chow Chow breed of pup comes from ancient China. They have a reputation for being dignified, muscular, tireless, and a bit aloof. You can see some of his heritage in the Chinese-inspired lantern by his side and the gong he carries on his back. Really nicely designed mini. Next is a Newfoundland Monk. If you haven't seen a Newfie before, they can be pretty massive, weighing up to 150 pounds. They're typically thought of as gentle, noble giants, and I think that comes through with the mini here. To me, this one looks like he's already working on board a sailing ship. In Animal Adventures, awakened dogs have many reasons to seek out adventure, whether it's their instinctive drive to help and assist those they care about, or their natural curiosity about the world around them. Many take to the high seas to seek their calling. Finally, we have our Samoyed Cleric. This is a new dog breed for me. These bright white doggos hail from Siberia and were often used as nomadic reindeer herders. They're very social and get quite sad and mischievous without love and attention. The Sammy here is dressed for the winter and also bears some of that cultural influence in his Russian style clothing. I love the fact that he keeps a teddy bear next to his war hammer. And these are our dogs of the faraway sea. And there's lots of other doggo minis available through the Steamforge game web store if you're looking for a particular type or breed. Now let's look at our cats of the faraway sea. Just like the pups, cats were made playable in the Secret of Gullet Cove source book with feline traits, rules for different sizes, breed abilities that again acted like those feats from 5e. There's cat versions of the 5e classes, a new background, and of course, feline personality traits, ideals, bonds, and and flaws. The Far Away Sea adds five new kitty minis to use as well, and we don't need the prior book to play them. First we have our Siamese Rogue, with three trusty daggers secured to his back for all your dagger 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 fun. Cats in the setting are nimble, adaptable, and fiercely loyal, though trust with them must be earned. They can get themselves into and out of tricky situations with ease. Our Siamese Rogue here has a full bag of jewels that she's pilfered, plus one quite fancy little earring there, fitting for a good cat burglar. Next is the Oriental Shorthair Wizard Kitty. Just like in our world, cats have been welcome on ships for thousands of years. Not only are they great companions, but they help keep the pest population down. In the animal adventure setting, you can find kitties on ships crewed by humans, dwarves, elves, and even orcs and goblins. Our fancifully dressed wizard has not just one, but two spell books, unless the other one is a fish cookbook. Here is our Lakoi Druid. Lakoi is the Greek word for wolf, as the Lakoi cats supposedly resemble werewolves. They also have a tendency to lose their hair, either partially or entirely, making them look a little bit more like sphinx cats. This kitty has crafted some natural armor to keep warm and safe and brought along their owl companion. Now, awakened shipboard cats do more than just chase rats. They also make great navigators as they seem to have a preternatural ability to foresee changes in the weather. Here is our long-haired, well-armored Chantilly Tiffany Paladin. She looks a little worse for wear with her damaged cape and perhaps a few battle scars here and there. But a life at sea isn't a life of luxury. Many of the animals you come across in the faraway sea have lived a rough and tumble sea-battered life. But the cats? The cats are some of the most formidable combatants on the sea with their quick wits, sharp claws, and nimble movements. 
And if we're looking for fierce kitties, look no further than this Pixie Bob Barbarian. And while the name Pixie Bob doesn't exactly inspire fear, this is the breed that was bred to look like a bobcat. And with this kitty's furs and skulls and spikes, it's not really hard to determine what class he is. And check out the painted example of the Pixie Bob Barbarian by Electric Eve. Again, all five of these minis are included in the Cats of the Faraway Sea miniature set. Those are our core minis. During the course of the campaign, Steamforce Games will be hosting live sculpting sessions where Thomas Lishman and Russ Charles will be designing a sixth dog and cat mini that they'll add to the collection based on suggestions from you, the Kickstarter backers. So be sure you follow the Kickstarter to help influence what other doggo or kitty might be added to the set. But those aren't the only minis in the set. I know about a few more that I can share with you now. Let's start with the Kickstarter exclusive Baby Kraken mini. Now, as far as I know, the Baby Kraken isn't a playable character in the adventure. I believe he might actually be one of the villains, based on the fact that he's dual-wielding a knife and a meat cleaver. I do love the idea of a land-dwelling pirate Baby Kraken being a low-level mob boss for the characters to face. This mini is only going to be available as part of this Kickstarter, so if you do want to get your hands on him, be sure you go and pledge at a level that includes him. There are also gonna be a couple of mini sets that you can add on during the Kickstarter. As I'm making this video, I don't really know anything about the context in which these figures appear in the story, but I'm still gonna give you a little bit of a spoiler warning here as the figures themselves could be surprises for you if you're gonna be a player in a faraway sea adventure. That said, let's look at the first set of these add-on minis, Time in a Bottle. Time in a Bottle will feature two of these walrus minis who come on large size bases. I love the specially designed walrus armor with all the straps and pockets and pouches. He's got a nice bedroll on his back and a dagger strapped to his flipper. There's even a couple of potions up by his shoulder for easy access. This is another one of those minis that just seems like it would be a lot of fun to paint. The set also includes this fellow known as Mr. Fujit, a rather creepy clockwork construction with his top hat, steampunk cane, pocket watch, and clockwork spider companion. There's even what looks like a smaller baby spider by his other foot. This is certainly one of the most unique minis in the set, and I cannot wait to see the story in which he appears. Makes me wish we had a few more clockwork minis to go along with him. So, Time in a Bottle will come with two walrus minis and Mr. Fujit here. The other add-on I can show you is the Raiders of the Lost Coast. And we're going to start with our only humanoid in the bunch, Isandra, who appears to be a tiefling pirate. This is a good opportunity to remind you that the Animal Adventures universe still has all the standard races or ancestries that you're used to. It's just a setting with more than the usual number of awakened animals. So you can still expect to interact with humans, dwarves, elves, orcs, goblins, and, of course, Tieflings. Now, if Asandra is a pirate captain, which I'm expecting she is, she needs a first mate. And here he is, Charlemagne, first mate to Asandra. Armed with a crab, an octopus, an interesting spear or harpoon on his back, fish strapped to his shoulder for an afternoon snack, I presume, and a treasure chest underfoot. I don't know whose side Isandra and Charlemagne are going to be on in this adventure, but if you're going up against them, I think it'll be quite the contest. Charlemagne is also on a large size base. Finally, the Raiders of the Lost Coast set will contain four raccoon minis like the one here. Perhaps they're members of Isandra's crew? I don't know. But this little fellow looks like a mischievous one, and he's got a sack over his shoulder like a common cat burglar. But interestingly, he's also carrying around a shovel and a spatula, I think. So I'm really curious to hear about what his role is going to be. And remember, there will be four raccoon minis in the Raiders of the Lost Coast set. So those are our minis. I love them so much. And looking at Electric Eve's art makes me want to just take a month sometime and just focus on learning how to paint with a fraction of the talent that she has. I also wanted you to see how these minis look next to some of our regular minis. These are from WizKids Games, as I know a lot of us have WizKids minis. Keep in mind two things. The final Faraway Sea minis will differ when they get cast in plastic, so things like the base thickness may be different than what you see here. And since 
instance, this is a setting that you can drop into your regular 5e world, like the Forgotten Realms, you're very likely going to be using some of your regular D&D and Pathfinder minis right alongside these in your adventures. And don't forget that the Awakened 5th level spell is available to Druids and Bards under 5e rules, so there's no reason you can't use these as character options or character creation rules and use our minis in any 5e adventure that you want to run. I am all about seeing an adventuring party of a Siamese cat and a chow and an albatross and a koala toppling Strahd's domain. Can you even imagine? And the Awaken Animal spell is a divine spell in Pathfinder 2nd Edition in the core rulebook, so you can use these minis also in your Pathfinder adventures. But now, let me tell you a little bit more about what you can expect to find in the book. The Faraway Sea is located far beyond Gullet Cove and contains a series of islands, but they're all occluded by a magical maelstrom called the Rift. Every few days or weeks, the rift parts over one of the mysterious islands, making it accessible for adventurers and explorers for a short time before the mists and the storms settle back in. The book also gives us the Watcher class. Watchers live by a simple code, hunt the wicked. Now, how you interpret wicked is gonna be very important for your character, so you're gonna wanna sit down with your GM or your player to figure that out before you get started. Watchers are a martial class that will be differentiated from the fighter and the paladin and others, but you're gonna have to check out the final book and the campaign to learn more about that. And the book offers the Tinker Mage class, and I'm afraid I don't know much about that one just yet, but the name itself is pretty evocative. I imagine it as a combination of inventor, alchemist, and wizard. But I don't know. I'm really eager to learn more about that one. There's also a new kind of magical item, the genius loci, meaning the spirit of the place. Each island in the faraway sea is said to contain one of these powerful items, which can look like pretty much anything. And getting it off an island is going to be an adventure in itself. And there are rumors that these genius loci are the keys to unlocking the, mis the mystery of the obelisk at the center of the floating city of Flotsam, which is a hub for adventurers cobbled together from old ship holes and floating debris. There used to be another floating sister city named Jetsam, but it vanished without a trace several years ago. I don't know. I think I blame those shifty looking trash pandas. I mean, raccoons, raccoons. And there's a few other goodies I can show you. The Kickstarter will also feature these cool sand and surf dice that you can pick up as an add-on. And Steamforce sent along a sample of one of their battle maps, which they're also working on. All of this is subject to change, by the way. The map has a nice sandy beach on the first side. The map is 16 inches by 10 inches. On the other side, we have a less than idyllic volcano map. We also have a series of character cards that'll be available as a printable PDF to help your players get off to the races much more quickly. They're very cute, thematic, and readable. I love it when companies go that extra mile to make everything feel cohesive. And finally, Steamforge sent along one of their three new adventures that they're including in the new book. And I don't want to spoil it too much, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of a taste of what you can expect. It's called The Peril of Palm Heart Island. If you don't want any spoilers at all, skip ahead a little bit on the timeline down there. In this adventure, a goblin chieftain known as Pukul has discovered and harnessed the power of one of the island's genius loci, giving him extraordinary powers. In Pukul's case, he gained control over liquid rock. The power, of course, quickly went to his head, and he began to transform this once beautiful island into a foreboding molten fortress. And he just doesn't care about the native inhabitants that he hurts in the process. So the PCs must make their way to the island, discover what's going on, make their way across the island to Pukul's Skullcano Lair, and then find a way to stop him before it's too late. One great thing about this adventure is that there are numerous ways to tackle the challenges it throws at the party. You can certainly go in guns blazing, but there's also options for stealth and diplomacy for parties and players who may prefer a softer touch. See, Pukul used to be a reasonable and relatively stable goblin before he unlocked this great power. Maybe there's a way to reach him and bring him back from the brink. It's up to your brave animal adventurers to find a way. 
and there's so much more to Animal Adventures of Far Away Sea. This is all just a taste of what you can expect from the full campaign and all the goodies they have planned. Use the link in the eye up there or down in the doohickey below to go to the Kickstarter page and back today. This is a time to get the best price, unlock stretch goals, and help shape the development of the game. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section for me down below. Let me know what you think of the Far Away Sea in the comment section down below, and also also let me know what class your pet would be. But for now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.